In the last days, nearly everyone, everyone in the scene talked about the Eventide Riptide, and that's for a reason. Whenever Eventide is bringing out something, a lot is going on and the half word goes crazy and not entirely without a reason. However, many of these reviews take a long time to watch and you have to invest your precious time to watch them. So if you want just a compact overview of the pedals and of the information about the pedals, you could definitely leave a subscription on this channel because here you get all the informations about your favorite pedals in a nutshell. Now back to the Eventide Riptide. It combines two Univibe and two drives in a compact pedal format, so users get two effects in one. Riptide features two distinct voices for each effect, all available in stereo. The pedal can be controlled with the controls for vibe, speed, intensity, drive, tone level for each side of the effect. Plus users have a button for setting the order of the effects. And if you dialed in your favorite sounds, you can set it as one preset of five on the panel. More presets are, by the way, available through the Eventide device manager software. Eventide obviously thinks not only of guitarists, but also on other instrumentalists, and has therefore built in the line and the guitar effects input on the device. Furthermore, there are one input, two outputs, and the possibility to connect an expression pedal. Ba-boom! Done! Now, this is how it sounds like. Last week I was bitching about the Quad Cortex because it doesn't have PC controller. Now look at what they made happen this week. And only, I know, only because of my video. <laughs> the better version of the controller is now available for download on the site. And you can have fun programming your sounds on your PC, on your Mac or whatever. Enjoy and thank me by leaving a sub. Did I mention yet that the sub on this channel would be appropriate? You ask yourself, why would I do that? Well, I give you three reasons why. Well, first of all, because it's worth it. Second, well, because little poor me has to shoot videos in the middle of the night because I have to handle three jobs and the only time when I can shoot videos is like... So subscribe that I can monetize my videos and can shoot more videos during the day and can deliver more and better content for you. And third, because there's a giveaway as soon as Tony's Guitar Hangout hits the 1000 subscribers mark, I'm gonna give away my D1 from Walrus Audio. So make sure to share my videos, to like them, to hit the subscribe button and take the chance to earn this wonderful pedal. Hey, another guitar brand other than Gibson and Fender releasing guitars. Yay! The PRS SE CE24, the SE Swamp Ash Special and the SE Custom 24 Quilt are three new guitar in the line of PRS with new colors or in new colors. So basically all the guitars come around about with the same specifications. PRS patented tremolo, PRS design tuners and PRS 5815S pickups. The Swamp Ash model comes with HSH pickups. So another PRS designed AS01 single call S pickup is placed in between of the two humbuckers. Don't get confused. I was also like, huh? The one with the two humbuckers comes with a five-way switch and the other one comes with a three-way switch? Nope, the controls of the Swamp HSE are push-pull potties to split the coils. I don't know what your thoughts are on push-pull potties, but I personally hate them. 
it's just not practical for a live situation. What about a push-push potty or a five-way toggle switch or a seven-way toggle switch? What about that? That would be awesome. So guitar parents, please don't build push-pull potties in your guitars. Please don't. It's so annoying when you play and then all of a sudden you accidentally hit the push-pull uh, knob and then you're like, oh fuck, now I'm on humbucker. It's, it's just annoying. Apart from that, the other thing that differs on the models is the neck joint. The Swambash one and the CE24 come with bolt-on necks, the other one with the glued in. I mean, there's nothing more relevant to the sound than the neck joint. Seriously, if someone can hear a difference between a bolt-on neck and a glued-in neck, I'm gonna eat the D1 instead of sending it away. Subscribe now. Actually, that would be a funny video taking 10 guitars, 9 with a glued-in neck, 1 with a bolt-on neck and then finding out by hearing. Hmm. So apart from the push-pull bullshit and the neck joint, these are pretty cool guitars and pretty cool colors. If I now knew the price, I could give you a real suggestion. And some more pedal releases that came out this week. The Walrus Audio 385 MK2 Overdrive. Mercury X modular reverb system. Wow. which could be described as an advanced reverb pedal with insane amounts of user control available. Not a pedal, but last but not least, the Fender, yes, I said it, Fender, Highway Series Acoustics. And finally, a riff of the week again. And today we're looking at Deep Purple's Black Knight just because it's an awesome riff and I really love it. You put the third finger, the ring finger, on the seventh fret of the A string and then you play seven, five on the D string and then seven on the A string again. Then you go with the index finger to the fifth fret of the A string. And then to the 7th of the E string. Practice that until you're really familiar with it and then go on. Then you play again 7, 5, 7 on the A, D and A string. And then you go down with the finger with the ring finger on the 7th fret of the D string. Then go back to the D string 5 and to the A string 7. From the beginning. And then you play 5 7 on the A string and 5 7 D and A string. I'm gonna do that very slowly now and you can practice along with me. One, two, three, four. A little bit. 
bit faster. That's it for the gear of the week, episode 14. Please don't forget, every time you pick up a guitar and you practice along with me or along with a great Elevate Jam track on YouTube or just by yourself, you get a little bit better. And on that journey, I wish you all the best and hope to see you the next time on Tony's Guitar Hangout.